Hey guys, how's it going? It's again, and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you all more content. Today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to be doing a video on Magic Leap. I haven't been doing videos on Magic Leap recently because I've been focusing on AR Foundation. We've been building a lot of different examples with image tracking and other technologies. So. I think I need to get back into my roots, which is Magic Leap. I really enjoy the platform. So I'm going to be actually doing a video on image tracking, but with Magic Leap this time. So what we're going to be doing, we're going to be looking at some of the Magic Leap implementation for image tracking. We're also going to be building a demo. And then once we have the demo together, I'm going to be putting that demo in GitHub. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right, guys. So let me show you what we're going to be doing, which is to build an experience together and i haven't really used the image tracking with magic leap and i'm really excited about learning how it works i've been looking at the image and also the actual project that they provided as part of the their example so what i want to do is i'm going to be referencing back to some of the examples that they have and then see how we can build or on experiences with a couple of images that i already have so what i'm going to do is i already have a couple of components this scene is called image tracking I have a rendering component, a head post canvas component, and then I also have a content component, which is going to have a script that I haven't implemented it yet. It's called image tracking. And this one is going to be the example that I have from the other from the other scene. So I'm going to actually remove it because we're going to be creating a new one. We are going to need a privilege requester because we're dealing with the camera capture. So I'm going to I'm going to actually remove it and then we're going to be adding it from scratch. This one right here, it's going to be required because we're going to need to add our own image. Looks, looks like Magic Leap, it's already using their own image, which is this frame, which actually looks really cool. It's called, it's called the image tracking underscore deep sea exploration. So you can print this one out and try this image as well. So I'm going to use an image of my own so that we can go through, we can go basically go through that process. And, and then instead of using all these different prefabs that they are using, we're going to use our own as well. So I'm just going to remove this one and then we're in fact, I'm just going to remove the whole thing and then we can create one from scratch. All right. So let me see what we have. So we have a head post canvas. We have our main camera, which has the main leap camera already associated with it. Also the magic limb scene optimizer. So this is all pretty bare bones. So let me make sure that I didn't create a, a script already. If I did, we, I can show you what I did, but it probably doesn't have much in it. Yeah, it looks like it just, it's just a, a mono behavior with nothing in it. So I'm going to associate that with this component. This one is going to be called the image tracker, and which is the script that we were looking at. So this one right here. So now what I'm going to do is I need to get access to the controller. So we're going to be adding a reference to the controller connection handler so that when we press the trigger button, we can cycle through different prefabs that we're going to be creating. All right, so that's the first thing that we're going to be doing. Let's go ahead and go back into my main, my image tracking, double click on it. And okay, so there we go. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I have a reference to this component right here, which is going to be called the controller connection handler. Let me just go ahead and select it. I think Unity is compiling. Okay, so that's what we're gonna need. So we're gonna need to expo expose that. So this one is going to be the controller connection handler and we can just call it connection handler and it's going to complain because we haven't really added it. Let me make sure that I have the right, the proper one and we can go back here and go ahead and click on edit. And if it doesn't open up, it's okay. We can just go ahead and do this and click on edit script. And I think that's a core component and that's why it's not letting me add it, but that's okay. We can find, I think I use it on the rocking controller as well. And I'm not sure why it didn't, it didn't find it. I thought I had the, the exact same name. Let me make sure that I do. Yeah, I do have the same name. So it's just probably Uni, Unity just taking its time or actually code taking its time, which, which it did. Okay. So now that we have this component, I want to go ahead and bind it to a meta. So I'm gonna go ahead and look for the some of the so the controller connected or controller disconnected. We can go ahead and bind to that. And if you look at the arguments of this, it actually takes a system direction that bytes. I'm going to go ahead and look at my 
connection controller. And then I'm going to just go ahead and copy this meta. And we can, I normally know this by memory, but I haven't done Magic Leap videos in, in quite a while. So in quite a while for me, it's just, you know, three weeks. So it's okay, we'll, we'll figure it out here together. So when the controller gets connected, we're actually gonna bind to a different component. So it's gonna be the trigger down and the trigger up. So for this one, for this video, I'm just going to use the trigger down. So let me go back. This one is just so if you want to check when the controller is connected, we don't need to check for that. In fact, all I need to do is just check for the ML input on trigger down, and then we can handle the trigger down. And we don't need to have a Boolean there. So this is gonna be, you know, just uh, the common input handlers that we had before. So now that we have that, we can cap capture information from the, from the control. Let me make sure that that's everything that we did here. We also need to remove the the actual the actual event that we're that we're binding to, and that's how you do it. You bind to them on the you basically unbind from them on the undestroy. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. Let's go ahead and unbind, and we're gonna do we're only doing the untrigger down. So I'm just gonna do that one. So we're adding we're adding a connection to the handler on trigger down here which it's basically listening for this event. And then when we destroy this game object, we're gonna remove the binding. All right, so and let me just get rid of this using a statement. So we can now capture the controller input. And let me make sure that that was everything that I, that I had, that I was doing on the other videos. Okay, so I think that's everything that we, that we normally do. This is something that is good to do as well as a habit, is just make sure that you require the component so we can do that as well here. We can just do require component, type of, and then we're just gonna say controller, connection handler. And then and that, that just make makes sure that you have that component associated. If you don't, then it's going to complain. And in fact, what's gonna happen now, it's right now I have it associated with if I if I go ahead and remove this component and we re-add it, let me go ahead and click on. Let's go ahead and do image tracking as well, image tracker. And then this is what's gonna happen. It's gonna add it automatically for us, which means that we don't really need this component. This is just a prefab that magically provides. So what I can do is I can just remove this component here. And then we can just use the one that gets associated with this component. And then we can just say, you know, we're gonna capture, we're gonna capture everything. I think that's what I had on the other one. In fact, we can just look, yeah, it was mixed. And then we're just looking at most of the different options. So, so that's what we have so far. We have the image tracker. So now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna look at the the image tracker component that we're gonna be, it's called the ML image tracker behavior. So let me go ahead and look into the examples that Magically provided and make sure that I have, and we can just go into image tracker. So this is the example scene that I have. It's actually really, really cool because you can toggle between view modes. And what that means is just basically they have different prefabs based on the view mode. So instead of doing what they're doing, I'm going to do it a little bit different, but we're gonna look we're gonna look at some of the implementation they have. So I'm gonna copy this component, which is the deep sea exploration as a reference. And then we're also going to be looking at what they have as far as the image tracking example script is concerned. So I'm just gonna copy those two. We're gonna go back into our scene, and and I'm not gonna lie, I, I wasn't 100% prepared for this video, but this is honestly what you'll do if you had to do an experience like this. You can look back at examples and then building those on your own. Okay, so this is the example they have, and they have a privileged requester, so we're gonna do the exact same thing. The reason why we need the privileged requester is because we're gonna need access to the camera. So we're gonna have to add a, increase the size to one, and then select the camera capture. So we're gonna need that, and then let me see what else we're gonna need. We're also gonna need a component like this, which is the image itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy it, and we can just rename it. This one is going to be our own image, so I'm gonna call it the, the frame, or the game that frame. And I'm gonna show you why that is, because I'm going to actually, I have a frame here in my room that has is, is more about game development, so I'm gonna be tracking that image. So that's good so far, and then the image that we're gonna be tracking is gonna be a different image, so I'm just going to, and I'm also gonna remove this visualizer, we're gonna do it a little bit different. 
and okay so we just need to bring in the image i'm going to remove this one and let's go back into here and make sure that everything is zero zero zero, zero. and so just a couple of things here this is the ml image tracker behavior this is the one that is going to be tracking the image and and it's going to be responsible for finding the image in the real world we're going to tell it that it's going to be stationary and just going to put the i'm basically just going to put that frame on to, you know, at an idle place, we're gonna we're not gonna be moving it around. And then I'm going to also enable auto update, and I'm just gonna leave this as a default because that's what they had. So if it doesn't work, we can go back and then just change a couple of things. And then what I'm gonna need is I'm gonna need a different image. So I'm gonna go into textures and then go into my AR foundation examples and find an image that I've been using for the examples that I built with AR Foundation. So we'll just go here. Let me sort. And I believe this is going to be the one here. Assets and the image assets library. If you want to access this as well, you're more than welcome to do that. That's also in GitHub. And then I have one here and also one here. Let's just go ahead and add one for now. It's going to drag it and drop it here and make sure that everything everything is good. I'm going to compare that to the the image that the other project is using just to make sure that we have everything set up correctly. I'm going to go into their project and then deep sea exploration and then I want to look at this component, make sure that I have everything set up the proper way. And in fact, we can just go ahead and copy this name, go into our other scene, and then we're just going to be comparing what Magic Leap has versus what we have. All right, let me go into textures and then I'm just going to take a quick glance at what we have here. And let's go into, this is the one that they have. And default to the, or, okay, so everything is good. Read and write enable on the texture. Let, let me make sure that I have that. And this is set to normal qual quality. Okay, and let's go back into ours. And I didn't have this one set to enable, so we're going to set it to enable. And normal quality as well. And I don't believe the generate me meet maps was enabled let me make sure that yep that wasn't enabled so we're just gonna we're just going to go ahead and set it back and then also non power of two is set to none we make sure that that is set to none as well and then i'm gonna uncheck this okay so everything should match to what magic leap has so our image is ready then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go back into our rendering component and then or gain that frame and I'm going to associate our new image with the ML image tracker behavior image. Okay, so that looks good. So, so good so far. And okay, so we're good so far. So now what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and open up our image tracker. And I'm going to steal some code. So just don't just don't don't tell anyone that I'm doing that. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to look at their example here. I'm just going to put it on the right side. And I'm not going to lie, I don't know, I don't know the implementation really well, but we are developers and creators, so I'm sure we can figure it out. Okay, so by looking at what they have, this is, this enum right here is just so that they can swap between the view modes, which means they have a different prefab based on what the enum value is. We're not going to do that, so I'm not going to worry about it. And then we are going to grab a track behavior. And in fact, I'm just going to have just one behavior for this, for this example. So let's just keep that in mind. And then we'll just look and see. So this is a good check. And that I would recommend that you do that on the awake, just to make sure that the controller connection handler has been bound. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do awake. And then we just skip out of this, because I don't want to add the auto, the auto complete. OK, and then we'll just copy that, except I don't like, I do like from time to time using underscores for private variables, but I'm not going to use that. So just going to copy that piece. And then we are going to need this implementation here because this is how we're going to make sure that the privilege has been requested and meaning that we can access the camera. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab that as well. So I'm just going to say private privilege requester. And then we're just going to, we're just going to create a variable for that. So I'm just going to use non underscores. And then we're going to need to bind to that method. We go ahead and find that method here, which is going to be the handle privilege done. It's going to find it. OK, it's going to copy that as well. Let me go ahead and paste it here. And then 
there we go. So what does this mean? So this means that whenever we have, we, we basically have the privilege of capturing the, the video, the camera information, then we can continue with the experience. If we, if we can't do that, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna disable this game object, which means that we're not gonna be able to capture and track the image. So this is what Magic Leap is doing. They're just saying, okay, if the result is okay and the privilege has not been denied, then we're not going to disable this. But if the privilege has been denied, we're gonna basically have a privilege deny error. So that's what this means. And then, so, and also if it does, if it's not equal to okay. So if any of these executes inside, that means that we're not gonna be able to continue. Otherwise, we're gonna be able to continue. So that's what they're doing in here. And then a start capture means that we're gonna be start to, starting to capture the image on the image tracker. So we're gonna do something similar. Let's go ahead and do private and then we can just call it a star capture as well. I think that's fine. And then this is gonna be void. We're not returning anything. So, so far so good. So let me go ahead and add that. It's going to be private email tracking behavior. And then it's what's gonna be email tracking behavior. And we make sure that I get that right. If not, I can always go back into Unity and make sure that I have a reference to that. And it's actually called the ML image tracker behavior. So ML image tracker, there we go. And let's just go ahead and rename this. It's gonna be image tracker behavior. I think that's fine. And then the the next thing that I want to do is if you notice on their example, they, they wanna make sure that everything is started before they do this. So they also have a started, a started property that Magic Leap added. I don't know that I'm gonna need that, but we'll find out as soon as I, as soon as I continue. So I'm gonna start the capture and then we can look and see what kind of methods we can, we can bind to. So some of the methods that I'm gonna need to bind to are gonna be on target found and on target loss. And then also on target updated, it looks like on target updated occurs when the result gets updated for the image target once every frame. This provides the target position orientation. So I think we're gonna need that in order for us to know where, where to put the prefab. And also these ones are gonna be helpful just to find out if we are finding the target. So what I'm gonna do here, let's go ahead and do a couple of methods. This one's gonna be on target found and I'm gonna be honest, again, I haven't done this before, so I am as new as you are with these features. And I am having a lot of fun. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do, the first one is gonna be on target found, which is gonna add it, and then we're gonna to map to this method. And then let's see why it's complaining. It's complaining because it also, it also has a, I think it's the reliable Boolean so we're just gonna say, is this bull, is this reliable? And that just means like if we find it, but it's not as reliable, then that, that it, it might mean multiple things. Maybe the lighting is not right. So let me go ahead and change this. And then on loss, this just takes an action. It doesn't, I don't think it takes any, pro, any parameters. So let me just go ahead and add it. And well, never mind. it does take a different parameter. The call is ambiguous because, let me see why this is ambiguous. And, oh, okay, I see. Because I didn't, I didn't rename this one. This one is gonna be on target updated. And now that should be good. And then also the on target updated is gonna be bound here. I'm gonna be binding this here. And then this one I believe takes different parameters. So it's gonna be an action of a male image target result. So let's go ahead and do that and ML action, see what it was called. I think I can just like right click on it. Go to definition, big definition. Okay, so that's not gonna help us. That's okay, we'll, we'll look in here. See, ML image target result. Image target result. And then ML, we can just say image target result. I think that's what they need. And okay, yeah, so that looks good. And so I don't know what this has. Let me see what it has. It has the position, rotation, and a status. 
every target will have an associated status indicating the current tracking status. Okay, so this is this is helpful. So the more that I do this, the more that I'm thinking that we're gonna need to uh, have some information on the canvas displaying. So I think for now we can we just make sure that I have. So let me go through this one more time. So on the awake method, we're gonna check that the connection handler was associated. If it is, we should be okay. We're also gonna be accessing the privilege requester when this is completed and we did get the privilege from from the from the from the operating system then we're going to go ahead and start the capture if something goes bad then we're going to be basically displaying a privilege deny error or we're going to be just logging that information to i'm going to log this to the canvas in just a minute i'm going to be changing how this works but and then we're going to start the capture the other thing that i want to do is i want to unbound from all of these on the on destroy so let me make sure that I also do that. I'm going to do a negative for all of those. All right, so I think we're good so far. And then let me go back into Unity and we're gonna be adding more of a logging so we know what's happening because otherwise we won't know if things are gonna work or not. So this one I'm just gonna duplicate it, move it down. And then I'm going to just call this one log. Okay, and then we can just remove everything that it has in it. And then the next thing that I'll do is, let's go back into VS Code. I'm going to create an expo and expose the a text box. I don't know why I call it text box. It's actually just a text. This is gonna be the blog log. And it's gonna take a minute here. There we go. And then we need to serialize this. Perfect. Okay, so what I want to do here is I want to I want to see what's happening now. So if we don't see what's happening, it's going to be really hard to troubleshoot if we get it if we don't get it working. We're just going to say, okay, this is going to be the results of that, and this result can actually just come here. And we can just use a string interpolation. I'm going to do my dollar symbol there, and then okay, so that looks good. Also, I'm going to replace this. Perfect. Okay, let me just copy that line. And then what I'll do here is, so the reason I wanna use that is because I wanna see what happens when the target is found. So I'm going to be setting this equal to, and then I'm gonna say is, let's see, we can just say the target is reliable. And perfect. And then we can also, we can just copy that. Okay, so what I'll do here is I'll just say, okay, if this is true, we can just say that the target is reliable. Otherwise, we're gonna say the target is not reliable. Okay. Okay, so so far so good. So now what I'm gonna do if the target is lost, we're just gonna say the target was lost. Perfect. Okay, so I think, I, I think that's good. And then on target updated, this one, I, I don't want to print it because it's going to, I don't want to add it to the bug log because it's going to execute way too many times. Instead, what I'm going to do on this one is I want to just make sure that I'm changing the position and the rotation of the object that we're going to be tracking. So let me go ahead and do that. We're going to be need to add a component here that we're going to be tracking. So this is going to be the game object. It's actually gonna be the object that we're gonna be instantiating and, and showing when we find the target. So this one is gonna be target target object. Okay, and then I'll just serialize it as well. And what I'll do here is I'll just grab the, we can just grab the transform and then set position and rotation and image target result. We're just gonna grab the position, comma, the rotation excellent perfect okay so i think i think that looks good then the other thing that i want to do let's actually add it i i really want to see the, the the status that shows on the image target and maybe what we'll do for that is we'll create another variable another expose text this one is going to be tracker image tracking status that way we don't combine the two this one can be 
we can just say on this one text and then we just look at the image target it's going to be the status i want to see what that is and oh it looks like that is actually an enum let me see what those are and this is actually ML image target tracking status. Okay, so we can just convert it to a, to a string. Perfect. All right, so I think that looks good. This looks good. And let me go back into Unity and we need to add our tracking status. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this. Let's move it down a little bit and then we can probably just put it right next to, we go into 2D so that I can align everything. Okay, so that works good there. And then I'll just, just make it the size of the logo. Okay, so this is gonna be the tracker status. Tracking status and okay, so we have, and then we can probably just make it bigger. Yeah, so I think that works. And then we can just center it and then vertical align it. All right, so this one, it's going to be associated. Let me go into image tracking. We need to associate some of these. So I'm going to grab the image tracking status, the log, and then the object that we're gonna be using. That what I'm gonna do is, let's see if we have something that we can we can borrow from Magic Leap. <laughs> let's see, so they have an earth, they also have a gem, they have a chair, and they have this little guy which actually looks really cool, which is the Deep Z. It's probably what they're using on their own and then also a plan. So let me go ahead and use this one. I think this one works, except this has a constant force, a rigid body, and other components that we might not need. Let me see this one. So it's just a sphere. Let's actually use this one. I wanna keep it, I wanna keep it simple. So I'm gonna go into my image tracking, and then let's go ahead and associate this with the target object. I'm also going to go and remove and uncheck the 2D. Because I want to see how big this is, just to make sure. And I'm going to go 0, 0, 0. I have an idea of how big the object needs to be. So I think I'm going to go about a tenth of that. OK, there we go. So I'm going to go a tenth, which is, this is all in meters. So it's going to be a tenth of a meter. So I think that looks good. And then what I'll do for that is I'll create a new prefab under the prefabs that we're using. And original prefab, let's go ahead and do original prefab. Okay, so we have a 10 and that looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. Let's go into our image tracking and associate it. Perfect. So let me just make sure that I didn't just screw up the example from, okay, so this looks good. And this is gonna be the one that we're using. Okay, so I think, I think we're good. Now on, on this variation, or let me go ahead and drag it and drop it. This one I want it to be, let's see, let me make sure that the, okay, so I think that actually looks good. So I already have the prefab associated with our script. I have the text boxes, I have the privilege requester. And let me go back into the code. And I think everything else looks okay. Let me go ahead and remove and close out of this. And we're so so the way that this is gonna work right now, this is hasn't this is actually not bound to anything. And what I was what I wanted to do was to swap the object that I'm using. And we could probably do that if I or what we can do is we can make sure that when this happens, that's when we start the experience. And let's actually do that just to keep it simple. So I'm just gonna say private bool. We can say star tracking and then we can just set it to false by default. And what I'll do here is if we if we press the trigger button, that's when we're gonna start it. I'm gonna say true. And then what I'll do as well, we can also print this out. We can just say handle or start capturing. Capturing has been enabled by the trigger button action. Okay, so I think that looks good. And, and then by default, when we start the experience, this is gonna be set to false. So I think we're good. As soon as we press that, we're going to say true. And then what is gonna happen is, let me, so this is gonna start, this is gonna start. 
and I just want to make sure that so if I don't do let me see handle privilege stone this is going to get executed a start capture is going to get executed and then so this is what we can do we can just say start start tracking return false it's going to still track it's just not going to update the it's not going to update the position of the of the object so that's fine we can just say here that debug that log that text we can say start capturing is currently disabled okay and then what we can also do is we can grab the target object and then change the visibility to false so that we don't see it and then otherwise we'll set it to true or we can also say you know start tracking so this is going to be if start tracking is true so this this needs to be if start tracking is not true which means that it's going to be false so we're going to say that that means that this is going to be false and that means that this will be true when we start tracking okay so i think this looks good and okay so i think i think i'm happy with what we have i'm going to go ahead and try it on the magic leap device and then we can see it running line on my device in a few basically in a few minutes from now all right guys so i did run the application on my magic Leap device but looks like i can start the camera recording and at the same time use the camera to do tracking so unfortunately i'm not going to be able to show you the results but this code is going to be available in github and you can download it and try it on your own I would recommend that you basically print out the label that I put, the tech, the actual image that I put, and then basically put it in a paper, and then you can see how the the image behavior that I added it's going to it's going to track. It's actually really really cool. It works really well. I also want to walk you through a couple more changes that I did on this. In 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 fact, I I made some changes to the script after I realized that I was missing quite a bit of things in the example so but again this is going to be available on github so don't worry about getting it right the first time because you can look at this and see it as an example so one thing that i needed to do was i added this as a serializable field because i needed to bind the ml image tracker behavior to the one that we created in here which is the game dev frame so i did that i also added a new a new variable which is a private variable for the target object this one is the prefab and the target object is going to be the one that gets instantiated so that's another change that I did. I also moved the connection handler and added the get component here before we actually check to see if it's null. Add a couple more debugging just to make sure that we could see that. And then let's see. And then as soon as we start the capture, I am basically making the game object visible because in the hierarchy it's currently set to false. And then I'm also enabling the image tracker behavior. And then all of these components are all the same. One change that I did here is I'm checking to see if the target object is null. If it is null, then I instantiate it and I set it to be the position and the rotation of what the ML image target result is returning. Otherwise, if it's not null, then we know that it has already been instantiated. So I just change the position and rotation. So that's basically everything that I wanted to show you. Again, it's going to be in GitHub under my repository. Let me show you where that is so that you know where to get it from. So if you go to Dilmer V and then Magic Leap Essentials, this is a repository that I have with a lot of different examples for experiments that I've been doing. I'm going to be adding this scene that I have right now. And remember that the scene is called the Magic, the actual the image tracking scene. So go ahead and download it and then run it on your device. And if you have any more questions, let me know in the comments. Thank you guys. All right guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about what I just showed you, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources for the developers. And also find me in Patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes. And also early access source code. Thank you very much, guys.